Then at the word of Helen, Paris spoke. My tale is shorter than a summer day. My mother, ere I saw the light, awoke. At dawn, in Ilios, shrieking in dismay, who dreamed that, twixt her feet there fell and lay, a flaming brand that utterly burned down to dust of crumbling ashes red and gray, the coronal of towers in all Troy town. Then the interpretation of this dream my father sought at many priestly hands, where the white temple doth in Pitho gleam, and at the fane of Ammon in the sands, and where the oak tree of Dodona stands, with bows oracular against the sky, and with one voice the gods from all the lands cried out, The child must die, the child must die. Then was I born to sorrow and in fear. The dark priest took me from my sire and bore, a wailing child through beech and pine wood drear, up to the knees of Ida and the oar, rocks whence a fountain breaketh evermore, and leaps with shining waters to the sea, through black and rock-walled pools without a shore, and there they deemed they took farewell of me. But round my neck they tied a golden ring that fell from Ganymedes when he soared, high over Ida on the eagle's wing, to dwell forever with the gods adorned, to be the cupbearer beside the board of Zeus and kneel at the eternal throne, a jewel t'was from old King Tross's hoard that ruled in Ilios ages long agone. And there they left me in that dell on trod. Shepherd nor huntsman ever wanders there, for dread of Pan that is a jealous god. Yea, and the ladies of the streams forbear, the naid nymphs to weave their dances fair, or twine their yellow tresses with the shy. Fronds of forget-me-not and maiden hair, there had the priest appointed me to die. But vainly doth a man contend with fate. My father had less pity on his son, than wild things of the woodland desolate. Tis said that ere the autumn day was done, a great she-bear that in these rocks did won, beheld a sleeping babe she did convey, down to a den beheld not of the sun, the cavern where her own soft litter lay. And therein was I nurtured wondrously, so rumor saith I know not of these things, for mortal men are ever wont to lie, whene'er they speak of scepter-bearing kings, I tell what I was told, for memory brings no record of those days that are as deep, lost as the lullaby a mother sings in ears of children that are fallen on sleep. Men say that now five autumn days had passed, when Agelius, following a hurt deer, trod soft on crackling acorns and the mast that lay beneath the oak and beech wood sear, and dread lest angry Pan were sleeping near. Then heard a cry from forth a cavern gray, and peeping round the fallen rocks in fear, beheld where in the wild beast's tracks I lay. So Agelius bore me from the wild, down to his hut, and with his children I, was nurtured, being as was deemed the child, of Hermes or some mountain deity, for those with the wild nymphs are wont to lie, within the holy caverns where the bee can scarcely find a darkling path to fly through vales of bracken and the ivy tree. So with the shepherds on the hills I strayed, and drave the kind to feed where rivers run, and played upon the reed pipe in the shade, and scarcely knew my manhood was begun, the pleasant years still passing one by one, till I was chiefest of the mountain men, and clomb the peaks that take the snow and sun, and brave the angered lion in his den. Now in my herd of kind was one more dear, by far than all the rest, and fairer far, a milk-white bull, the captive of my spear, and all the wandering shepherds called him Star, and still he led his fellows to the war. When the lean wolves against the herds came down, then would he charge and drive their hosts afar, beyond the pastures to the forests brown. Now so it chanced that on an autumn morn, King Priam sought a godly bull to slay, in memory of his child no sooner born than midst the lonely mountains cast away, to die ere scarce he had beheld the day, and Priam's men came wandering afar to that green pool where by the flocks I lay, and straight they coveted the goodly star. 
and drave him, no word spoken, to the town. One man mine arrow lit on, and he fell. His comrades held me off, and down and down, through golden windings of the autumn dell, they spurred along the beast that loved me well, till red were his white sides, I following, wrath in my heart, their evil deeds to tell, and Ilios at the footstool of the king. But ere they came to the god-builded wall, they spied a meadow by the waterside, and there the men of Troy were gathered all, for joust and play, and Priam's sons defied, all other men in all Maonia wide, to strive with them in boxing and in speed. Victorious with the shepherds had I vied, so boldly followed to that flowery mead. Maonia, Phrygia, Troia there were met, and there the king, child of Laomedon, rich prizes for the vanquishers have set. Damsels in robes and cups like the sun shone, but the white bull was the chiefest one, and him the victor in these games should slay, to Zeus the king of gods when all was done, and so a sacrifice should crown the day. Now it were over long, methinks to tell, the contest of the heady charioteers, of them the goal that turned and them that fell, but I outran the young men of my years, and with the bow did I outdo my peers, and wrestling and in boxing overbold, I strove with Hector of the ashen spears, yea, to the deep-voiced heralds bade us hold. Then Priam hailed me, winner of the day, mine were the maid, the cup, and the chiefest prize, mine own fair milk-white bull was mine to slay, but then the murmurs waxed to angry cries, and hard men set on me in deadly wise, my brethren, though they knew it not, I turned, and fled unto the place of sacrifice, where altars to the god of strangers burned. At mine own funeral feast had I been slain, but fearing Zeus they halted for a space, and lo, Apollo's priestesses with a train of holy maidens came into that place, and far did she outshine the rest in grace, but in her eyes such dread was frozen then, as glares eternal from the Gorgon's face, where within Athene quells the ranks of men. She was old Priam's daughter long ago. Apollo loved her and did not deny his gifts, the things that are to be to know, the tongue of soothsaying that cannot lie, and knowledge gave he of all birds that fly, neath heaven, and yet his prayer did she disdain, so he his gifts confounded utterly, and sooth she saith but evermore in vain. She, when her dark eyes fell on me, did stand, at gaze a while with wan lips murmuring, and then came nigh to me and took my hand, and led me to the footstool of the king, and called me brother and drew forth the ring that men had found upon me in the wild, for still I bore it as a precious thing, the token of a father to his child.